All right. Are we running? Okay. Took a moment, but we got there. All right. And we're going to continue in our study in the book of John. And uh, I think it's a very appropriate title today for the nation that we live in today. A divided people. Yes. And uh, um, United States, well, I don't call it the United States anymore. America uh, has never been more divided than it is right now. If you'd watch Huckabee's show last night, saw this young woman from China who lived under Mayo over there, you would understand where we are right now in America because the same thing is happening in America right now that happened in China when they, the communists, took over the government there. A divided people. And Jesus said that, did he not? He, he said he came to divide people. He did. Beginning in verse 40 of chapter 7, some of the people, therefore... When they heard these words, were saying, This certainly is the prophet. Others were saying, This is the Christ. Now, just because they said, This is the prophet, saying that did not mean a total commitment to Jesus. There's people today, you ask them, well, Do you believe in God? Well, I believe in God. Well, if you really get into it and start asking them, which God do you believe in? Uh, who is this God? Do you believe in Jesus? Then you get a whole different answer. Uh, in fact, a lot of times you ask people if they're saved, and the first thing they'll tell you is, well, I go to such and such a church. Okay. Well, that just answered your question for you. If you ask somebody if they're saved, and they tell you they go to such and such a church, they just answered your question. No, they're not. They just don't know it. Mm -hmm. They think because they go to church, they're going to go to heaven. And, uh, oh, if it only worked like that. You see, this what we're reading here with these people who committed and said, others were saying this is the Christ. That sounds good. But it's also a testimony against us. They would acknowledge that He's the Christ. But they wouldn't follow Him. We have people that will acknowledge that Jesus is Christ. They just don't want to follow him because they have to change their lifestyle. And people don't want to change. Still others were saying, surely the Christ is not going to come from Galilee, is he? Now they just made an assumption. First of all, they were willingly ignorant. The records, they had the records. If they had just taken time to go look at the records, they would have seen that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, just like the Scripture said He would be. But, because somebody said He was born in Galilee, what would you call that? Fake news? They just assumed that He was born in Galilee because that's what they were told. <laughs> Boy, if we've ever seen that, look at America today. People running around like a bunch of sheep believing anything they're told. Because the news said so. People said so. So it must be true. It's amazing how people can doubt. You can tell somebody there's 27 zillion stars in the universe. Oh, well, that, that, that sounds right. Okay, I can believe that. Uh, there's 52 different sexes that you can be. You just choose. And there's 52 different alternatives. Well, yeah, that's what yeah yeah that's what we hear yeah that's 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 what we hear today yeah. Well, a baby is not a baby until it's actually born. Well, it makes sense. That makes sense. You know, it has to be born and breathing before it becomes a baby. Even though they delivered one this past week in Australia that weighed seven ounces, seven ounces, and it lived. And I love this one. Oh, I loved it. There's no such thing as absolute truth. How do you answer that? Here's how you answer that. Does that include the statement you just made? It just tears itself apart. If there's no such thing as absolute truth, then what they just said is not absolutely true. Can't be. It's amazing what people will 
accept as truth, and yet when you tell them that Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way you can get to the Father is through me. No, wait a minute, I doubt that. I, 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 there's got to be other ways. They can believe all these other things, but when you start talking about Jesus, they won't accept it. Now, we all know that has nothing to do with facts. They can accept those other four things I just told you without changing their lifestyle. Nothing has to change. But when you say Jesus is the only way to the Father, and if you expect to get to heaven, you must obey and do what Jesus said, all of a sudden, they doubt. I've said it a hundred times, and I'll say it another hundred. Anybody that does it, Accept Jesus and doesn't want Jesus. It has nothing to do with facts. The evidence is out there. The reason people don't want Jesus is because if you accept Jesus, you have to change your life. And we all have it. We, we, we see it every day. Our loved ones. Every one of us have loved ones that are, are living and in sin, they don't, they don't want Jesus in their life. They want to live their life the way they want to live it, and yet expect to go to heaven, and we know better. And they say, well, well you're just interfering in my life. You just must hate me. No, no, we don't hate you. If we hated you, we'd just let you go on and go to hell. No, the reason we interfere in your life is because we love you, and we want you to know what Jesus said. Then you can make a rational decision. But ultimately, the decision is yours. But the doubters have been from the beginning. Does he surely doesn't come from Galilee? Well, we're going to see in a little bit. I'm going to point out to you something to prove that they knew better when they made that statement. They knew better. Has not the Scripture said that the Christ comes from the descendants of David and from Bethlehem, the village where David was? Well, yes, it does. But as I just said, if they had bothered to check, if they had bothered just to look at the scrolls, they had the record. The record say that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So, what is the problem here? The problem here is that same as it is here today. People don't want to change. That's basically what it is, folks. The people that, you know, why do we have people, and we're, we're sitting here in church this morning, and we're worshiping our Lord. Yeah. Why do we have people who are out here mowing their yards and doing their yard work and washing their cars and going to the lake and going here and going there and doing all these other things instead of being in, they want to do what they want to do. It's that simple. It's not that they don't know. It's not that they don't, most of them don't know and don't believe. They know, but they choose to do what they want to do. And when there are loved ones, it breaks our heart. Because we know the ultimate price that's going to be paid for that. And we, everybody here, we're going to heaven, but we want our loved ones to go with us. Heaven's just not going to be the same without them there. It's going to be wonderful. We're going to be with the Lord. But it would be so much better if we could have all of our loved ones are with us. And we know that. But here's, a, here's the truth. Doesn't sound good. Don't like it. I don't like it. But here's the truth. All of our loved ones are not going to be in heaven with us. I wish it wasn't true. But it is. We're going to be in heaven. And many of our loved ones are going to be apart from us because they chose to. They doubt it. A divided people. But we shouldn't be surprised. The Bible does say in Micah chapter 5. It says where Jesus will be born. But as for you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one will go forth. For me to be a ruler in Israel, his going forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. He always existed. Jesus did not come into being in Bethlehem. He just left heaven and came to Bethlehem. So, a division occurred in the crowd because of him. But what did he say? We should have known that. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. Now it's, it's odd that he would say that, seeing he's called the prince of what? 
peace. He said, I did not come to bring peace, but a, a sword. God knew that his word would divide his people. Some will see it and accept it. Some will see it and reject it. Most will do like most of us did. We reject it, reject it, reject it, reject it, and finally he brought us to a point to where we accepted. And God kept drawing us in and kept loving us and kept loving us. Folks, you can reject God and reject him. That's dangerous. You can do it. But let me tell you this. He's going to just keep loving you and loving you and drawing you and drawing you. And most times, many times, that love will overcome your rejection. But here's the bad. Here's the, here's the dangerous thing about rejecting him. God will let you suffer the circumstances. And he, you may have to go through a terrible, terrible time in your life for him to break you and bring you to a point to realize that he is the only thing in your life that counts. Folks, if you had everything else in the world didn't have God, how, how would you be? Would you trade today? If God would just give you all the riches of the world, give you anything your heart desires right now, you name it, you can have it, but you never see the face of Jesus. Would you make the trade? I don't think anybody here would make that trade. A division occurred in the crowd because of it. Some of them wanted to seize him, but no one laid hands on him. Why did that? Because the Holy Spirit restrained them. They couldn't get to him. They couldn't touch him. Jesus right. could not be put to death. Jesus could not be harmed until he was ready. Yeah. On his timing, on his schedule, when he was ready. Nobody crucified Jesus. Jesus said, I lay down my life. No man takes it from me. I lay down my life. And he also said, and I take it up again. <laughs> I like that part. I take it up again. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to borrow this grave over here from Joseph Arimathea to use for a couple, three days because I'm not going to be there long. <laughs> so, All right. uh, the officers then came to the chief priest and the Pharisees. And they said to him, why did you not bring him? <laughs> why did you not bring him? Now, but notice something that's not said here. What was going on, we've been studying for the last two weeks, what was going on out with the people in the streets? Were they not having a feast, an annual feast, and worshiping God? Notice what I just read you. You just missed it. The officers then came to the chief priests and the Pharisees. Where were the chief priests and the Pharisees? They were back there taking care of their private business. They were back in the temple. They weren't out with the people. They weren't out worshiping God. They weren't out during the annual feast. They were back here having their committees and deciding how they were going to run things. Yes. Like a lot of churches do. They weren't even out. They were supposed to be the holy people. They were supposed to be the holy men. And they weren't even out during the annual feast for seven days to worship God. They weren't even out there. They had to go find them in the temple. They were too busy with the rules and regulations to go worship God. Folks, we've got a lot of churches today like that. They're too busy with the rules and regulations uh -huh. to go worship God. Cross the right enough T's and dot the I's and go do this, 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 and this. We've got to do all of that. Y'all been in some I've been in some church services, you walk out and you feel like you've been to a funeral. I had a preacher who used to tell us that you got two kinds of Christians. You got the happy clappies and the frozen chosen. Uh -huh. I like the happy clappies, okay? Yeah, I like the happy clappies. Now, it can you can do it the other way. It's just as bad. You go to a church where all they do is they they're they're singing and, and playing all kinds of music and dancing and doing everything and everybody just, oh man, that's wonderful, wonderful. And they walk out and say, oh, we had a glorious service. So said, what was it about? Well, we had a glorious, oh, the music was great and, and everybody was singing. Well, what was the sermon about? But, but boy, you should have heard the music. You see, that's extreme both ways. Yeah. Just because you're somber doesn't mean you're holy. If you go to church and you don't get God's word, you haven't been to church. 
Yeah, amen. If you go to church and haven't, don't get God's word, you haven't been to church. You just went somewhere and sat for a while. So the officers and the priests and the Pharisees weren't even out there where they should have been. And the officers answered, look what the officers said. Never has a man spoken this way, the way this man speaks. Even the officers that they sent were convicted by his speech. This is what happens even when evil men hear God's word. When men hear God's word, one of two things is going to happen. Whoever you are, when you hear God's word, his actual word, his true word, you will do one of two things. You will run to him or you'll run away. But you can't stay the same. When you hear God's word, you can't stay the same. You'll either run to him or you'll run away from him. You'll either accept him or you'll reject him. There is no middle ground. Oh, so many people wish there were middle ground. There is no purgatory. There is no middle ground. When you take your last breath here, you will, your soul will either be in heaven or hell, one of the two. It won't be floating around out here somewhere in space waiting for somebody to pray you into heaven. That's some more heresy. The Pharisees answered and said, "What well, you have not also been led astray, have you? But not one of the rulers or Pharisees has believed in him, has he? Well, let me answer that question for you. What's the answer to that question? Not one of the rulers or Pharisees has believed in him, has he? What's the answer to that question, class? Yes or no? Oh, come on, class. Let me give you a couple of hints. Matthew chapter 8, verse 18. Then I'll ask you the question again. Or after 9, I'm sorry, 18. While he was saying these things to them, a synagogue official came and bowed down before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. A synagogue official said that. John chapter 4, verse 53. So the father knew that it was at that hour which Jesus said, Your son lives, and he himself believed, and his whole household. John chapter 12, verse 42. Nevertheless, many even of the rulers believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they were not confessing him for fear that they'd be put out of the synagogue. Now, let me ask you that question again, class. Not one of the rulers or Pharisees has believed in him, has he? Is that yes or no? Is that a true statement? False. Right. Many had believed. Joseph of Arimathea believed. Many believed that they were scared to say anything because they would be kicked out of the church if they said they believed in Jesus. Before we're too hard on them, how many times have you wanted to speak up when somebody said or did something and you wanted to say, do you really think you should do that? Isn't that a sin? Do you think Jesus would be happy with you doing that? How many times have you wanted to do that, but you bit your lip and you didn't say anything? Anybody? Amen or oh me? Hmm? Boy, you're quiet today. I guess that's good. Those aren't rhetorical questions. I, I'm asking for, I really want you to think about it. How many times have you bit your lip? How many times have you denied Jesus? You didn't come out and deny Him, but you denied Him by being silent. So before we're really too hard on them, we need to take a look in that mirror and ask ourselves how many times have we denied Him by not standing up for Him. Anytime you don't stand up for Him, you just deny Him. And we, t we stand up for him, not because we, we hate people. We stand up for him because we love them and we want them to know the truth. And it may just be that what you're telling them, they don't know. Don't, don't assume that everybody knows it because you do. So just tell them. Now, once you tell them you've done what Jesus called you to do, the decision is theirs. But Jesus calls us to tell them. 
So once you tell them, then it's off your back and it's on theirs. You've done what you're supposed to do. But if you don't tell them, maybe you don't want to hurt their feelings, so you don't tell them about that sin. What if that's the sin that sends them to hell? What if that's the sin that keeps them from Jesus? When you stand before God, He's going to show you the day you had the opportunity to share the gospel with them, to tell them what they were doing was wrong. Don't assume they know. And when you stand before Jesus, you're going to be guilty too because you didn't tell them. The people were divided. You don't believe him. You haven't been led astray also, have you? But they look what they said. Now, now they get real pompous. And I, and I thought it was interesting here how the rulers altered the facts for their own purposes. Look what they said. No, none of the Pharisees have believed in it. We're seeing the same thing today. Now there's a lot of argument out here. Should you get vaccinated or should you not be vaccinated? Should we have to wear a mask or should we not have to wear a mask? And there's good people on both sides of the argument. Just be careful you don't buy into false facts on either side of the argument. In fact, I was reading Romans 14 this morning and I went ahead and I even put it on Facebook for people to read. Because Paul said, and, and I don't think I can get to it that quick, but maybe I can. Yes, I can. Turn right to it. Look what Paul said. He's talking about eating and not eating. But he said, one person has faith that he may eat all things, but he is, who is weak eats vegetables only. The one who eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat, and the one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or falls. In other words, folks, if somebody, you know, and I tell people this, if you, are, if you want to take the vaccine and you think that's what you need to do, I'm 100% for you. I back you 100%. If you don't want to take the vaccine and you think you, for you have your reasons you don't want to take it, I'm 100% for you and I'll back you 100%. We all have a thing called a brain. Yes. Use it. What you do with your life is none of my business. And what I do with my life? <laughs> Everybody has to stand before God and answer. We don't know. Bottom line is this. We don't know about the vaccine. It hasn't been out there long enough. We don't know what the long-term effects are going to be. It may be there are none. It may be great. It also may be in a few years down the road we find all these secondary issues coming up because of it, but it's too late because it's already there. We don't know. So don't condemn somebody one way or the other. Make a decision, live with it, and support people, whatever they want to do, just support them. Our government wants to divide us, just like they're trying to divide here. They want to divide us. Rich against poor, black against white. This group against that group. They want to divide the nation because a divided nation will fall. And if you don't believe me, Look at China. Everybody thinks the same way over there now. Because the rest of them are dead. <laughs> if you don't think like the government, they just kill you. Not one of the rulers of the Pharisees had believed in him. The crowd, look what it said. But this crowd which does not know the law is accursed. Do you see that in society today? Don't you see it all around you? If you don't agree with what everybody else thinks you ought to be doing, you're dumb. You're ignorant. You don't have any sense. They're the smart ones, and you're dumb because you don't agree with them. Do we not see that all around us today? I, I, I don't know. Again, we don't know for sure. We just don't know. If we did, it'd be a lot simpler. But 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. Paul said, God has not chosen, has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. 
And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. So God said, all these people who think they're so smart, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame them, to put them to shame. But then the psalmist said in Psalm 119, in verse 99, I have more insight than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. In other words, God's Word. He said, you may have all the book learning, you may have all the intelligence, but I have God's Word and I have more insight than you have. Book learning won't get you to heaven either. And then look at Luke chapter 11, verse 42. Look what Luke wrote. Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge you yourself did not enter, and you hindered those who were entering. And he's talking to these people here, these Pharisees, these, these leaders. He said, you've taken away the key of knowledge. And instead of leading people to the Lord, you blocked them from getting there. You shut them off from getting to the true word, to Jesus. People, they, they, they think they're so intelligent. I was reading somewhere this week, I forgot where I read it, but the, uh, the boss, the big boss was in the office and he walked over to a guy standing beside the machine and he had some really important documents with him. He said, hey you, yes sir, how do you operate this machine? He said, well, you just put that paper right, put it in that slot right there and hit that button. And, and he said, and so he walks up to, the, looks at the machine and it's a paper shredder. So he takes the papers and he puts the papers into the, the important documents into the paper shredder and push the button. And then he looks at this dumb employee standing there and says, how do I make three copies? Intelligence does not relate to being smart. Education does not relate to intelligence. Some people today think they're so smart and they have all the answers. I don't know anybody that has all the answers except the one that wrote this book. Amen. And I've learned something in life too as I got older. The more you learn, the more you understand you don't know. True? The more you learn, the more you understand you don't know. But he, he asked that question. This crowd does not know the law. Now look who speaks up. Nicodemus. He who came to him before being one of them. So you got Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea we know of. And he said to him, Our law does not judge a man unless it first hears from him and knows what he's doing, does it? I believe maybe Nicodemus was put there for such a time as this. You know, people think they're so intelligent, so smart. The crowd does not know the law. Folks, I believe a lot of times we can learn a whole lot more in our prayer time and our quiet time and our meditation than we can learn in all the books we could read. When has God taught you the most? In your time alone with Him. You can read every book we have back here in the library and learn more in five minutes in quiet meditation with God than everything in those books. You see, God, when He speaks, He speaks to your heart. And He speaks truth. You don't have to worry about it if it's truth when it comes from God. And by the way, He said the crowd does not know the law. Were these not the teachers and the Pharisees the leaders that were saying this? Let me ask you a question, class. Look up here. Let me ask you a question. If these were the teachers and the people did not know the law, whose fault was that? The teachers. If they didn't know and they're the teachers and they're calling them dumb, it was their job to teach them. That's why it's so sad today we have so many churches that teach everything except God's Word. And people go out, go out of those churches with a head full of facts and they're not true. But look what he said. He said, they, it, our law doesn't judge a man before it hears him. He's, he's arguing 
from their own law. He's using their own law against them. He said, wait a minute, you're wanting to judge these people. You haven't even called them before you and questioned them. Our law doesn't judge people. With, remember, in their law, you had to bring somebody before them and you had to have two witnesses. One witness wouldn't do it. You had to have two. He said, you're judging them and condemning him and condemning them and you haven't even brought them before the court. They answered. This is what I told you I was going to get to this later. They answered him, You are not also from Galilee, are you? Search and see no old prophet arises out of Galilee. Wrong. Can anybody here name me the prophet that came out of Galilee? I'll see how good you are. There was a prophet that came out of Galilee. Anybody know who it was? Well, let me give you some hints. God called him to go witness and he ran away. He ran down to Joppa and ran to a ship. Jonah. Jonah was from Galilee. Notice what I said about how they take the facts and just use what they wanted to use in the facts to make their point and not worrying about the truth sounds a whole lot like our news media today just put out there what you want to put out don't worry about the truth and if you get caught don't worry about it everybody does it that's the world we live in today but when they had no answer and here's what we're running into today you're running into it and I am too when they had no answer for sound logic they turned on the messenger. And they used what we call fake news. That's what they'll do. When you get into an argument with people today and you start discussing and try to use facts, when they run out of facts, I'll tell you when they run out of facts, you can tell it too. When they run out of facts, all of a sudden they start getting louder and louder and louder and they start calling you every name under the sun because they don't have an argument. They don't have any facts. We have some people out there today that all they want to do is destroy this country, but they have no facts to debate you. So if they want to win an election, they've got to steal it. If they want to win office, they've got to steal it. And if you don't agree with them, they have to shut you down and destroy you. But it started, they had the same issue back here. But here they're dealing with the teachers. The leaders, the religious leaders in the church. And many, I'm afraid, the religious leaders in the churches today have fallen right in lockstep with all of this because they want to get along. Folks, we'll never compromise. They may shut us down, they may put me in jail, but I'll tell you what, we'll never compromise. Not on God's word we won't. A divided people. 